In this video I want to show you how I paint two bee eaters in watercolor with a lot of detail. And while I'm making my sketch, let me tell you a bit more about these birds. Bee eaters are found in Africa and Asia, Australia, New Guinea and Southern Europe. And in recent years they have also formed small populations in Germany. These birds have a spectacular colorful plumage and as the name suggests they eat flying insects, especially bees and wasps. They remove the sting and the venom before they swallow it by hitting and rubbing the insects on, the, on a hard surface. Bee eaters live in colonies and they build their nesting burrows into sandy banks or cliffs often near rivers. So my main interest in this drawing was to get the relationship between the two birds right. So aligning their heads and their beaks so that they face each other. And then I also made sure that I get the details in the wings and um, in the tail right. So this will help me later because they have this very colorful and interesting uh, wing structure and this will help me later when I put down my paint. I'm using cotton paper for this painting which allows a lot of layering and very smooth transitions. I'm starting my painting by wetting my paper in the belly area of uh, the left bird and then I drop in a mix of blue-green and since I've prepared my paper in this way you can see the paint spreads out and uh, ends up in a very smooth and soft layer of paint. And this is a mix of Taylor blue and viridian so you could also use Taylor green for this which is really transparent and intense pigment that's good for building up layers and good for, for painting in this way. You can see I'm applying the same color all around the, the other areas of the two birds. So I'm slowly mixing in other greens here. And while these layers are still wet, the paint or the different colors flow into each other and allow for these really smooth tra transitions. Adding in a bit of burnt sienna here for the brown parts in the wings. And here I'm mixing my transparent yellow with a little bit of Cnacridone gold for the throat area. Really spectacular yellow. And at this stage, as long as these um, painted areas are still wet, I'm, I'm trying to paint in a way that I can continue painting, but um, so that the colors won't flow into each other too much. And for these parts in the wings and uh, on, on the tail, I use this sort of um, mixed olive or sap green with a little bit of Taylor blue. And here for the head and the shoulder region, I just use my transparent sienna, which is a version of burnt sienna really. So the, the color is basically the same, but it's really more, um, it's milled down even finer, this pigment. So you can layer with it very well. Adding in a little bit of yellow for the transition and doing the same for the other wing. And as long as the uh, painted area is still wet, you can drop in more color to, to make the layer more intense from the start. And since this head and shoulder region has this very intense red brown, I know that I can get away with dropping in a lot of color right from the beginning. You can see I'm blotting out a bit of paint because I want to have these um, regions of the wing to stay white because they actually are white. 
And preserving the whites is always um, better than going over them with white paint later. Now my mix of Taylor Blue and Viridian gets a little bit more intense. And you can see how beautifully the color builds up on the second layer. I'm adding the feet in a, a light gray or a middle gray, basically a watered down version of my neutral gray. And painting these areas where the two birds overlap is always a little bit tricky, so you have to wait until uh, the other area is completely dry and then you can add in the, the next area. Here I'm making sure that I don't lose the detail that I added with my pencil earlier. So I'm making sure I get the wing detail right. And bee eaters have these interesting red eyes. So I'm just using my transparent sienna for this. and another layer of burnt sienna or transparent sienna mixed with a little bit of burnt umber to um, take the intensity of, of the red tone away. You can see a, a little bit bled into the, the yellow throat area and I'm trying to remove that. And this is a technique that's um, basically only possible if you use cotton paper. So if you use wood pulp, uh, inexpensive paper, then this will get very complicated after a while and after a few layers because the fibers will just break apart. So for this kind of painting, it's always advisable to use cotton paper. So I'm mixing a darker green with more viridian and less of my Taylo blue, but it's still a blue green for these dark areas in the wings. And you can see I'm slowly building up these layers. I'm slowly building up the color that I know I want in the end. Here I'm using my dark blue green to restate these areas in the wing. And finally, I'm adding some neutral gray for the dark parts of the bird. I'm also adding the iris. So now he he actually looks out into the world. And here's this part around the throat or where the throat meets the breast that has a dark band. And I have to admit it um, got a little bit too, too fat. So usually these throat bands are a little bit thinner, but I didn't want to repaint the whole scene so I left it that way. You can see on the right bird it's much thinner. So this got a little bit out of hand. I want to leave the branch that they are sitting on unpainted so I'm just adding in the outlines with my fountain pen. And I'm adding uh, another layer of paint to the bill and the face area, so these dark spots.
And for this entire painting, I used a size 4 round brush. So this is a th synthetic brush. And it makes sense to use a smaller brush when you know you want to include lots and lots of detail. Or at least make sure that it has a nice uh, fine tip. So bit by bit I'm working out the feather structure and the texture, so to speak, of, of the entire bird. And you can very well see the areas that need more work. And the process for doing paintings like this is basically um, repeating the, the same moves over and over again. So you add a layer of paint, you let it dry, and then you add another more refined layer of paint and so on. And that's really all there is to it. So it's not as spontaneous as sketching, but it can be very precise and give you a very refined and beautiful look. And although my reference photo was taken in sunlight, I've decided to not include the harsh shadows that I could see. You can see around the beak of the right bird, I actually removed uh, a bit of dark paint on the top. And you can see how this looks uh, when it's dried. So another layer of paint and now I'm already noodling in a bit of detail. So more feather structure, darkening parts of the birds that need a little bit more darkness. And I'm making these small brush strokes to indicate that these birds consist of feathers. And now I'm bringing out my colored pencils, which I find really useful for adding more structure and more fine lines. So I can really bring out the, the single feathers that you can see stacked here in the wings of the bird. So colored pencils are a great tool to use on top of watercolor. And you can either use um, simple colored pencils or uh, watercolor pencils. And I actually use both kinds of these in this painting or in this illustration. So light blue to restate these light lines over the eye and below the eye. And as you can see, this is really great to pick out a single detail and make these feathers stand out a bit more. So I'm using colored pencils here by uh, Faber-Castell. And as a last touch, I'm adding a little bit of white to the throat and to the eye so that the eye actually looks moist and gives a little bit of, of life to the birds. And that's basically it for this more detailed illustration tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. And um, yeah, if you did, then give me a like, uh, leave a comment or subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, then uh, also let me know below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, happy sketching.